Hey everybody and welcome back to Amanda Marie NP where today we are going to be covering another must know topic. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and tap the red subscribe button and stay to the very end because I'm going to be sharing with you a shocking tip, one education point and some really, really great information that you need. Okay, so let's get into today's topic. What is leukoplakia? Such a funny word. Leukoplakia or oral leukoplakia is the most common chronic keratotic lesion of the oral cavity and is potentially pre-malignant. And that is something that I want you to think of when you think of leukoplakia is potential for malignancy. It is a clinical diagnosis and is characterized predominantly by adherent white plaques of the oral mucosa. One source says oral leukoplakia has an estimated prevalence of 0.1% and is mostly found on the tongue of middle-aged and older men who smoke. So pay attention to some red flags here. So you're going to hear these kinds of things when you see questions on boards or when you're out in the practice, you're going to be thinking, okay, I need to know that middle-aged men are more prevalent to get this. I also need to know that it is the most predominant oral lesion. And I also need to be thinking that it's going to be in men who smoke. So oral leukoplakia has various forms based on thickness, texture, color, and regularity. And each form has a different biologic behavior. So each one's going to show up slightly different. Each one's gonna have slightly different um, signs and symptoms, but the bulk of all of this is going to slightly resemble the same um, presentation. There's going to be tenderness and induration on palpation, and those are actually indications of malignancy. So the different forms of leukoplakia involve the first type, which is simple or flat. Next, we have erosive or ulcerative leukoplakia, and then we have a warty or plaque-like, and then smoker's leukoplakia, um, and finally soft leukoplakia. So bottom line is it is prevalent, it can be cancerous, and there are multiple different forms, but all of them are going to have this white type of texture to the tongue or the oral mucosa in general. So there's some internal and external causes. We're going to start first with external causes. So what if you see a question on the boards and it wants to know for your NP board exam, um, you know, what can cause leukoplakia? And of course, it's not going to word it quite so simply, but you're going to want to know some different causes. External causes include things like smoking, use of drugs in the mouth, food which can mechanically injure the mucosa, and overly acidic foods or salty or spicy. Um, so basically just doing damage to that very sensitive oral mucosa. The effects of some medications can make a person more prone um, to developing leukoplakia. A malformed bite or deviation of the position or absence of natural teeth. The consequences of inefficient dental treatment and prosthetics, including malformed bite and the presence of sharp edges. Galvanism the resulting potential difference of the metal structures in the mouth, occupational hazards, exposure to chemicals. Those are some of the external causes of leukoplakia. When we look at internal causes, anemia is one that comes to mind. So here would be a definite patient education is making sure that your patients are not anemic or deficient of vitamins responsible for the regeneration of the mucous membrane of the mouth. Pathophysiology or pathology rather of metabolism. So predisposition to leukoplakia of the mouth genetically um, there are immune deficiencies, GI pathology, and then chronic processes in the oral mucosa of an inflammatory nature. So again, paying re really close attention to oral hygiene is a must. Keeping up on your dental visits, your um, screenings, your cleanings, just dental hygiene in general, and early detection is going to be something that's vitally important to teach your patients. So next we're gonna talk about treatment of leukoplakia. The approach to management is surgical resection, 
also laser treatment, or just plain careful monitoring should be selected based on the histopathologic degree of dysplasia and on the clinical features. So basically what this is saying is the aggressive forms of treatment are going to be for the various types of leukoplakia that are aggressive in nature, that are more concerning and alarming, that it could actually be malignant. Non-surgical treatments have included the administration of retinoids, vitamin C, beta carotene supplements, um, and more that I have listed here on the slide. So make sure you stay to the very end because I'm going to share with you a shocking fact, a teaching point, and a really awesome algorithm. So long-term observation and periodic biopsy are important to monitor for recurrence and for evidence of malignant transformation. So the key with leukoplakia is wanting to make sure that this is A, not malignant, and B, that we pay really close attention to the leukoplakia areas, whether or not they're spreading, becoming more tender and painful on palpation, and catch them very, very early on if this is going to be a malignancy. So an interesting fact is such a white line is actually found in patients constantly that many doctors accept this as being the norm. However, in reality, it's a manifestation of a simple leukoplakia. And if not treated to observe its development is a must. So you must treat these. You must observe them. You must take biopsies. You must be very vigilant so that this does not turn into a malignancy. So these are all of the sources that I utilized here for today's presentation. And now let's jump into our kind of shocking fact and our education tip. So the treatment may remove the lesions of leukoplakia with inside of the mouth, but a fair number of them return. I was kind of saddened to see this simply because you would think when you have a medical condition and you have it taken care of that you may not have to worry about it again moving forward, but this is huge. So we need to educate our patients that just because they had it removed or just because they have it and it has been kind of dormant or unchanged for quite a long period of time does not mean that a it won't come back or b that it won't then turn into a malignant form of leukoplakia so the patient education key point here is to educate 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 about stop using tobacco and alcohol and any and all other mucosal irritants. So lastly, I just want to draw your attention to the description box of today's video. I have launched an amazing thing for you guys. If you are subscribed to the channel, then go ahead and click in the description box below, join my email list and grab a helpful algorithm today that is going to help you to be able to differentiate in your patients on your NP board exam exams and elsewhere, whether or not the thing that you are seeing in your patient's mouth that is a white lesion inside of that oral mucosa is leukoplakia or some other form of oral lesion. Thank you so much for watching today's video on Amanda Marie NP. I hope that it has been super helpful for you. Go ahead, subscribe to this YouTube channel and become an MP with me. I'm just an average Jane doing my thing. And if I can do it, you can do it too. My goal on the channel is to help you reach all of your healthcare goals. So yeah, go ahead and subscribe and I will see you my friends in the next video.